everybody, this is Pastor Susan, and welcome to a new week of devotions. As we are continuing our sermon series on doubt and faith, and if you have not had a chance, I encourage you to go and look at yesterday's sermon. So we're going to be following up with that in these next few days as we are talking about and reflecting on why the innocent suffer. And uh, one of the misconceptions, um, Adam Hamilton says, is that, uh, that we have about scripture is that um, only the good enjoy blessings and they don't suffer, but that's not true. Over and over again, throughout the scriptures, we see these main characters of faith who struggle um, with suffering. They struggle with their faith and they um, have to rely on God during very, very perilous times. Today we're gonna to be talking about one of the patriarchs. Uh, this one is Joseph. You might remember Joseph as the, uh, as the guy who had a many colored coat. He was the favorite of Jacob. There were 12 sons and the, le the other 11 were very, very jealous of him. He, he was a braggart. He talked about dreams that he had and that they would be bowing down to him. And they were so angry at Joseph, they were ready. Uh, to kill him. Um, and so they, they're out together and they throw him in a pit and they're just, you know, they're, they're conniving about what they're going to do and how they're going to tell the father that Joseph has been killed by animals. And anyway, uh, we get to this place in Genesis chapter 37. I want to read verses 25 through 28 and I want to encourage you just if you want to pause the button and, and get your Bible out turn to chapter 37 of um, of the story in Genesis and let's look at these words together then they the brothers sat down to eat and looking up they saw a caravan of Ishmaelites coming from Gilead and their camels carrying gum, balm, and resin on their way to carry it down to Egypt. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it if we kill our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay hands on him, for he is our brother, he is our flesh. And the brothers agreed. And when some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him out of the pit and sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. So I hope that you will especially read chapters 37 through 39 if you can today uh, that tells you more of this story of what was going on uh, through this time when Joseph was in Egypt. To give you, um, to give you a condensed version of that, uh, you may remember Joseph is enslaved by uh, Potiphar, and he um, is accused. He 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 really rises up in the ranks, and he's accused by Potiphar's wife of of sexual abuse. So he gets thrown in prison, and when he's in prison, um, I mean these are these are bad things that are happening to poor little old Joseph. But during that time in prison, he um, he grows up. He grows up from a very self-centered kid into someone who is more focused on others and rises up, ends up rising up in the ranks because of this gift he has of dream interpretation into Pharaoh's own home. And he becomes the number one to Pharaoh um, in a time in which his family um, needs to be saved. They're going, they're starving from famine. And he needs to be saved. And, and uh, uh, Jacob ends up sending the brothers uh, to Joseph. And uh, so I want you to read that story because it is an amazing story. But it seems like sometimes when we're reading this story, the Joseph narrative, that we are seeing that Joseph is somehow the hero of the story. But actually, the hero of the story is found in uh, chapter 39, verse 21, which says, The Lord was with Joseph and remained loyal to him. The Lord was with Joseph and remained loyal to him. It didn't mean that he wasn't going to go through hard times, but that God was always with him. 
And, you know, we think about the Israelites being in Egypt. You know, they all come to Egypt and they settle there for 400 years. And 400 years goes by until we find the slaves freed because they all became slaves. And they became freed under the leadership of Moses. And we think 400 years, that's a really, really long time. But as Peter mentions briefly in one of his writings, he said, you know, a thousand years as, is as one day to God and one day as to a thousand years. That doesn't mean that God's not present in the moment, but sometimes we might think God is slow in acting. And I certainly hope that we don't have to wait a thousand years to get an answer to our prayers. But I do know that this presence of God that is always with us, that gives us hope in the midst of struggle, is what you and I are called to focus on. The scriptures tell us this over and over again. And so today my question for you is, are you suffering or is someone you know suffering? I, you know, I got, a, uh, I got a text earlier this week about a friend of mine who'd been going through a very, very difficult time in his life. And all of a sudden, uh, the wind was not literally knocked out of his sails. He was hit with a very, very serious physical um, incident. And it's been four months, four months of rehab, four months of struggle. And now he is able to go back to work. He's able to drive again. And uh, my friend um, has had great faith through all of this. You know, one of the things that we need to know is that God will give us the strength as we rely on God to offer it. So if you are going through a struggle today, if you're asking that question, why, what did I do to deserve this? Remember, God is at work in your life and in mine. And though God doesn't cause bad things to happen to us, remember in the story of Joseph, it was, it was Joseph's brothers who did this to Joseph, even though God was with him. And God is with you and me as we go through those struggles. The question is, will we, will we rely on our faith and trust in the midst of struggles? My prayer for you and me is that we today will offer ourselves to God and say, I believe. Help my unbelief when I'm struggling, but I believe. Amen and amen. Mm -hmm.